Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr. This is the On The Stacks Podcast. Oh yeah, whoa, look, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail to snow, I'll go again. I never quit, because I know that every loss may lead to another win, I'm going up. Grab a slice of pizza and join me in today's episode with Jim Mirabelli, pizza influencer and founder of NEPA Pizza Review. Food is one of the best ways to connect with someone, and Jim's journey in the pizza industry is the perfect example of that. Before he became a highly successful pizza blogger with national recognition, Jim worked his way up in the pizza industry from dishwasher to pizza yellow, a chef who has been trained to make real Italian-style pizzas. In this episode, we discuss everything from family life, pizza and pasta, to building community, monetizing content, and most importantly, being authentic. And Jim isn't afraid to share any of his pizza secrets either. He shares ingredients, equipment, and tips for you to enhance your next pizza or sauce. This episode would not be possible without the support of our sponsors, so please check them out in the show notes. I'm your host, Bill Corcoran Jr., and this is Jim Mirabelli on the Stacks. Pizza evokes such memories and feelings. I'm like a numbers guy by trade, but like I have a creative side too. Food is a really powerful way to express yourself. And that's my mission, connect people in pizza. It took me almost a decade to realize that that's what I was doing. This episode is brought to you by Sweat Tent, the pioneers of the portable wood burning sauna. Did you know that using the sauna three to four times per week could reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by up to 50% and make you 60% less likely to experience Alzheimer's disease? That's why I've been a big fan of the sauna for years, but having to go to a crowded gym to do it isn't ideal. And all the at-home options are bulky and expensive. That's why I only use the sweat tent for my sauna needs. It's the most storable and affordable wood-burning sauna on the market. It not only takes minutes to set up, but it can reach 200 degrees Fahrenheit in 30 minutes or less. So whether you're enjoying it yourself in your backyard, with friends, or in need of a reliable sauna on the go, Sweat Tent is your best choice for the most portable, storable, and enjoyable outdoor sauna experience. All On The Stacks listeners will receive $100 off when you use code OTS. Visit SweatTent.com today to get $100 off your purchase with code OTS at checkout. Again, that's SweatTent.com to get $100 off with code OTS. Sweat Tent, helping you fire up your home wellness routine. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his Burn Board offers a low impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on-demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out of shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's the burn, T H E B triple R N dot com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. This episode is brought to you by Kavanaugh's Grill, one of my favorite places to eat and drink in any PA. They've got one of the best outdoor patios with 13 TVs and over 20 beers on tap. You can also dine inside at this cozy Irish style pub where your beer never goes empty. Did I mention how delicious their food is? Their in-house smoked brisket, barbecue ribs, and wings are to die for. So grab your friends and have a drink on me at Kavanaugh's. Mention code STACKS for one free draft beer with purchase of any entree when you dine in. Located at 163 North Main Street in Mountaintop, Kavanaugh's is open at 4 p.m. during the week and 12 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday during football season. Dine in today at Mountaintop's only Irish-style pub. What's up, podcast? It's your host, Bill Corcoran Jr. here in the Blue Door Studio, protected by Richie Security Solutions. Jim Mirabelli, welcome to the On The Stacks podcast. Thank you so much for having me today. Dude, this is great. Uh, you came in rocking some of the coolest pair of shoes, by the way. I love, I love, you know, somebody that just knows, like, good, nice shoes. I'll tell you, I think somebody gave me a Cole Haan gift certificate at one point, and I was like, oh, those are like sneaker shoes. My, one of my old bosses would wear them. And once I got this pair of shoes... It's like you could run a marathon in them, but they're <laughs> yeah. they're dress shoes, so yeah. it counts, even though they're rubber sole. Yeah, yeah, they're nice. They're the black wingtip. I'm a huge wingtip fan, like big, 
big. Like, I mean, I'm wearing, you probably saw I was wearing sneakers today. Uh-huh. I don't really wear dress shoes as much as I used to, but I was just always, you know, I was a Cole Haan fan. I still, I mean, still, I, I still have a bunch of their, the shoes and same thing. They're just like, man, you can like, you can do everything. You can do you everything never, in them. You never know when a game of pickup basketball is going to come <laughs> your way, right? Might break out. <laughs> you got to be ready. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, two things I like about you. Uh, you're a big pizza guy, obvi- obviously, right? And a guy that knows good shoes. I guess so. And shoes say a lot about the man. I did don't know you, what that's... Did you ever hear that saying? I I may or may not have. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, well okay. Well, this is your first. Yeah. So I, I just... I, yeah. Shoes say a lot about the man in a sense like, you know, like you, uh, you you care about your appearance and like you're, you know, you're just a well put together dude. I'm more of like a cartoon character because I wear the same jacket as you see and hat like in well, everything right. I do. Because I, I wear the same shirt. Everybody probably thinks I only own like one black shirt and one black backwards hat because everybody only ever sees me from here up, uh-huh. right? Every episode I look exactly the same. You do have other clothes though? I don't oh. actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I have a, yeah, I have a couple other shirts maybe. Um, yeah, this one's uh, I've just, you know, I, kind of, I actually just keep this one here. I, I just take this off and I keep re-wearing the same one until it starts to smell then I'll take it home and wash it like it's, once a month it's that's environmentally friendly right you know save some water <laughs> i'm kidding everybody i don't i don't smell do i no it definitely it, smells clean doesn't smell good fresh in here. in here does it good all right cool yeah better if it smelled like pizza uh, everything's closed uh, i know right now, so i know I we'll know. work on that i know i gotta start like recording these on different days because every time we go to get pizza on a monday i'm like ah oh, the good places are closed at least well a lot of them yeah, it's mostly like slice shops and things like that that are open, you know, seven days a week, you know, mall pizza, they'll be open, but it's really hard. That's the the small business owners, that's their time to, you know, maybe have a day off or usually they're restocking their pantries or their walk-in fridges or, you know, heaven forbid, doing something with family at home, right? right? Yeah, God forbid um, uh, restaurant owners do that, right? But, uh, you know, it'd be nice to have some uh, some Monday pizza though. It would, yeah, and there's some, you know, Um but, you know, I'll say some of the best ones are not open on a Monday. So, you know, we're, uh, I guess we're just going to starve. Who knows? I guess so. Yeah, I'll just wait till Tuesday. Yeah. So, so but, you know, um, going back to like the shoes and, the, you know, uh, that whole thing. So your last name, do you like, do you know, like, do you uh, know a lot, like a lot about like your family history and your name, like anything like that? Well, we don't know a ton. I'm a bit of a mutt, but I have the Italian. Uh, yeah, right. That's, that's what I, I want to know about. I want to know about the Italian side, if you know. Yeah. So um, I uh, I think I'm 28% Italian, something like that, according to okay. Ancestry. Right. So, so you do know a little bit. That's yeah, pretty specific. Sort of sort of got into that uh, last year a little bit. So it was interesting. Uh, I was able to tra- uh, trace back a few of my ancestors, and I think they were from the Calabria region. Um and uh, you know, saw a few draft cards and things yeah. through there, which was pretty neat. But I didn't go to the all access uh, pass in Ancestry. <laughs> okay, the upgraded, the upgrade, right? Yeah, so I, so I didn't get to learn too too much. Okay. But uh, I think there's you know a, a coal mining history there, and mm-hmm. uh, some some. Uh, I'd like to dig a little deeper when I have a little more yeah. time, though. Where did you look? Was it Ancestry.com? Ancestry and uh, newspapers.com sort of work together. Okay. And, oh man, when I first got that. Uh, newspapers.com subscription i was going down all kinds of rabbit holes for pizza for personal reasons uh looking up my wife's uh you know high school volleyball records yeah. and uh, it was just really cool i was like oh you didn't tell me you were like a big deal back then <laughs> yeah yeah uh so i, I really um I, i'm gonna have to resubscribe when i get a little more time because what a cool resource that is it is it is and you know I always tell everybody, usually, you know, when people, you know, whether I know you or not, I'm, you know, I, I, I Google everybody, right? Their name and everything, you know, just to, you know, you know, do background check the whole bit. Fingerprint. We had to have your fingerprint before it came in. I'm kidding. But, uh, but no, like when I, you know, when I Googled your last name, like I, I go, I, I went down a rabbit hole of ancestry, like, and I'm not even part of your fa- your family, <laughs> right? So I'm looking it up. And, you know, the, the first thing that like I, I read about like, well, just, just with the, the meaning of the name. Right. And, it, and uh, it, it derives from and I'm not going to even try to pronounce it. Maybe I will. Um, but it, but it, it, the meaning of it is amazing and handsome. Did you know that? Wow. I guess that couldn't be much more incorrect. But, you know, well, I definitely okay. didn't know that well, it ties to, it ties to the shoes. That's where, you know, people probably didn't know I was bringing the shoes back into the conversation. Uh-huh. But I think that's where um, it ties in together. See, well, Shoot, the, these are amazing and awesome shoes. Right. So this is what I mean. The shoes say a lot about the man. This is it ties right in. Like literally your last name means amazing and handsome. According, according, according to, according to ancestry.com, you know, take uh-huh. it or leave it. However, whatever, however you, however you feel about it. But 
She's, I already sounds have accurate. a very uh, enormous head physically. <laughs> uh, barely fit this hat, uh, so don't don't be promoting it that to get any larger. No, just <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I'm, I'm really puffing your head up here, like <laughs> really big. Um, I could use a little bit of that because my uh, my head's very small, actually. Uh, oh, that's yeah. Like we're opposites. Like I have like I have a really small head, and the hats like never fit me well. Like I feel like you know I, I don't know about you, but you could probably fit into like most hats. Would you no. say? No? Okay. Well, uh, then, then we are really opposites then. Yeah. So if I go to, uh, what is it, Lids in the yeah, mall, yeah. There, barely a chance. And if I do get like some a size eight hat, which is gigantic, you, yeah. you know, a family of four can reside underneath <laughs> it, you know? Um, so um, the like, you know, I'm a big Phillies fan. So I'll be looking through the stack. You get to the end, seven and five eights. Ah, I guess we're not going to have it today. But if I do find one, uh, it comes out with like such a high crown that it, I look like Elmer Fudd, you know? And okay. I don't need any help looking like a moron. So <laughs> I, I usually leave that on the on the uh, shelf, you know? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We leave, we leave the, the moron look there. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, with me, like even, even my own hats, like it's like there's like, you know, I don't feel it all. I don't yeah. feel it all. So maybe you can give me some of that, you know? Share some of it with me. There you and, go. Uh, I can feel this hat. But yeah, I always have the problem like hats are way always way too big, and I can never find a small hat that'll See that, that my. Otherwise, like if if I were really to pull this down like probably all the way, it would like it would, I feel like it would come down to like here. <laughs> wasn't there a uh, wasn't there like a Nickelodeon cartoon where the the kid looked through the the hole in the back of the hat? That's what I'm envisioning. Probably, right now. yeah. That that's I'll have to look him yeah, up. Yeah, it was probably me actually. Oh. <laughs> yeah. See, I, yeah. I didn't know you had a prior career. Yeah, yeah. Nickelodeon. I used to watch a lot of Nickelodeon. Same. Who didn't though? I don't know. Right. I feel bad for those who didn't. Mm-hmm. Is I wonder. I I haven't. You know, not that I would watch it anymore, but I wonder what wonder what's going on in Nickelodeon these days. Uh, you know, I think uh, Netflix and the different streaming services have cut into that. But um, right. you know, I remember, you know, uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark, Rocco's oh, Modern Life. Classics. Uh, Doug was a classic. Rugrats. Uh, lots all of, of them. Lots of classics. Rugrats. Yeah, and Rugrats, by the way. We, don't, we didn't all realize as kids, like, I feel like there's a lot of, like, weird, awkward, like, names and stuff in the, you know, the Dr. Lipschitz and, <laughs> you know, what, whatever all the other ones are. And there's, there's all these weird things that, yeah, obviously, none of us realize as kids. But now as adults looking back on it, it's like, oh, that's like, it's just, it's funny. So I watch a lot of Bluey now because my son's Dude, into that. Dude, same. Yeah. But they... I could they, do, I could I do the song they, and the dance right now if you want. I can get uh, up. What? Get back. <laughs> Don't put me on the spot, Jim. <laughs> but uh, I think they do sprinkle that in there for the adults, right? Because it's not the worst show in the world to watch, right? There's yeah. a little something there and you kind of relate to the dad. Yeah. And, are you know. talking about... Are you referring to Bluey? Bluey, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So the um, I remember like one episode and my wife a lot of times, she catches these things more than I do just because sometimes I might not be paying attention as much. But uh, I remember the one episode, it was like there was, um, I don't know who was in the shower, but I don't know if it was Bluey or um, what's the other, uh, the orange one. Uh, like we're supposed to be Bluey oh, pros. And, um, we are. Um, uh, it's the uh, the orange. Uh, uh, as soon as you say it, I'm going to really crap. be upset. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But anyway, I'll think of it in a second. But okay, so but, but I, I can't remember which one of them was walking past a bathroom, but the bathroom door was like wide open and there was there was uh somebody in the shower or somebody on the toilet or something and the, and you know whatever whichever one it was bluey or the the orange character was like oh there's someone on the toilet or someone in the shower right now and it's like you know it's like just weird you know like it's it's, it's things like that that obviously a, a, a young child's not gonna you know they might laugh at it but they're not gonna think anything of it like we would but i almost thought to myself like that's kind of weird it, right right but you related to it and yeah you oh 100 percent yeah. So it works, right? Yeah. It's this oh, two pronged yeah. sort of approach. Yeah. Yeah. Out of like, like I said, like out of um, the things that I do remember, like, you know, it's, it's weird things like that. Like I couldn't tell you probably a lot of other ones, but of things happening on Bluey, but bingo. There it bingo. is. Bingo. Oh, yep. I'm man. upset with myself. Me I should have known man. that. Me too. Like I was just bragging that I could get up and do the song and the dance. Like, you know, I don't think I'd try to sing it, but, but we all sing it at home. I, I, wherever you are, you need to be in the car on the way down. I probably was doing that. Maybe, eh, yeah, maybe right? not. Yeah. But I do yeah. know keepy uppy is like a time tested tradition in our home now with hitting the, keeping the balloon in the air. Oh, thanks yeah. to Bluey, you know? Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Same here. We, you know, uh, our son just turned two a couple months ago and you know, of course we had like 50 balloons and then guess what? Those, those balloons stuck around for a long time after the party and we had to secretly dispose of them. <laughs> 
because otherwise it would have been it was like a, it was like a massacre it was a it was a balloon massacre and you know we felt we, we couldn't we couldn't let Braden see us you know massacring the balloons because he would have been very obsessed so we had to slowly like you know get rid of them filter them out <laughs> exactly yeah because yeah, it was just like you said yeah you know, the balloons in the air all the time not that it's a bad thing it's a fun game though yeah you gotta is. admit 100 percent. yeah it's just it's just not fun when one pops not at all yeah there's a lot of sadness especially when it's only one balloon i've learned a lot of, yeah a lot uh, of sadness then it's over but uh the game keeps going you know pick up another bag and you have a few more hours of fun yeah yeah so your italian heritage is that like where the pizza stems from with you besides you working in the industry which which by the way like i didn't maybe really know up until like recently like how how much you really did like work in the industry and actually like legit know how to make pizzas which maybe a lot of your followers may or may not realize i know you share some of that content sometimes mm -hmm. but um you know i just found it interesting a lot a lot of times and nothing against any other you know food in general influencers but um a lot of people that are food influencers are just fans in general of food but aren't aren't somebody like you where you come from and you've like you've worked in the industry right yes i, I spent a decade working in pizzerias I, I think my pizza fascination sort of dates back a little bit before that um you remember the book it program yeah pizza hut and you get your, your pen <laughs> yeah, and your yeah. star so you read books uh uh, so I remember going there with my family, getting a you know a picture a picture of uh, Coke or whatever it was, and I get my you know four inch pizza, and my parents are get fleeced for whatever pizza they had to buy, um, but you know it was a good it was a good time there, um, and we'd go to a few other pizza places, Dino Francesco's and Clark Summit, which I ended up working at later in life, uh, and then Pompeii's and Tuncanic was another one, and uh, I always remember there was a fashion bug store, you, you know fashion. Yeah, I remember fashion. Yeah, in Tuncanic, and they had mirrors on the ceiling, and I would just stare at the mirrors at myself in the mirror, on the ceiling, uh, just passing time until it was time to go eat in the bright orange booths over in Pompeii's that are still there today. It still looks identical to, you know, the 30 years ago or whenever they, uh, whenever I was yeah, there. Yeah. Pizzerias don't really change much, right? I like that. And Me that's too. what's special about the little guys, the small businesses, they have the character and charm and quirkiness and they don't have unlimited budgets to knock a building down and build another one, uh, which is really cool though you go and you know whether it's an angelo's and wilkesbury or jerry's or um it's like a step back in time it and, is and, you know sabula's if you've been in sabula's yeah. and dupont um it's like that's nostalgic like, yeah and it's great and it takes you back now i wasn't around in the 50s but i imagine that's what it'll look like yeah. it's pretty cool well i'm gonna blow your mind right now maybe you know this maybe you don't and i you know uh, me and your followers won't hold this against you, but do you know how this building right here used to be a pizza place? Actually, a couple different pizza places. Get out of here. Yeah, you ready for this? Which ones? The Pizza Mill. I I've heard that's like legendary, I, isn't it? I I from what I hear, yes. But I you know again, I'm even ashamed to even admit I didn't I didn't know that. So when I bought this building, it wasn't a pizza place when I bought it. It was an office space for twenty some years. Uh, so but it was a pizza place you know, 25 years ago and all the day dating all the way back to like the fifties, I think is like fifties or sixties. But, um, but yeah, I've never had a uh, pizza mill either. Never had it. And I never knew, like, I never knew this building even existed till I, <laughs> till I bought it. Mm -hmm. But, um, when I did buy it, people are like, Oh my God, that's the old pizza mill. And I'm like, what? And then when I told people I didn't know what the pizza mill was, they got like, everybody's like, what? How do you know what the pizza mill is? And I'm like, Oh geez, I'm sorry guys. Like, like you better be making pizza mill pizza out the back. I'm telling you, I get messages asking if I've tried the pizza mill on the regular. Like, okay. At least once a month, somebody will check in. I'll get a message saying, what did you think about the pizza mill? Have you tried it? And I, I really have no idea what style of pizza it was or what it was like, but obviously it left a lasting impression on this right? area. Yeah, for sure. And and, and, and I don't know what, what it was before pizza mill. I think pizza mill might have only have been here for – like 10 or 15 years or something until they moved they moved like somewhere down the road and i think they i, I hope i'm not wrong here but i might be that they, they might have just actually closed up permanently do you know that or, or no do you know I, i'm not sure okay i'm not sure either so you know we don't want to i don't want people to cancel me or you uh. well here's one thing i like to do so I, every time every conversation i have is a content idea um so now i think i'll put out a mm. post of people to, to solicit their memories of yeah. the pizza mill there you go so we'll put that out. i love it but I did look it up. Like I typed it in here. Like, cause I, you know, again, like, you know, not that Google's always right, but most of the times, 
Uh, you know, it does say Pizza Mill permanently closed, but they moved down the road here. So this is 474, mm -hmm. and they moved to the address here says 254 and a half, by the way, a half, 254 and a half Schuyler Ave. So they moved down the road, which I, you know, I knew, you know, after people like, oh, yeah, this used to be Pizza Mill, but then it moved down the road. Um, but again, people, some people didn't, weren't sure if it actually closed or not, but, uh, you know, some people did say it did. Some people like you, I don't know. I, I'm going off of Google. It says permanently closed, but we should bring back, get some people to bring back some memories. I mean, I have the ovens. I just need a recipe. Ooh. That's usually the hard part, though. Yeah. Yeah. They may or may not share it, but. I would say they probably wouldn't. Probably not. But I, I would think, like, it would be so cool because there are a lot of examples like that of, of business that may or may not be closed, but uh, historic places. I wish there was, like, a National Archive or a, a Dude. PA archive of this. You could start it. You know, yeah. Like a Pizza Hall of Fame. Like yeah. it's Or like a Pizza Museum uh -huh. slash Hall of Fame. I don't think it could be the both, but... <laughs> It'd be great. But a lot of the things, though, a lot of times I find conversations with owners or people who knew ex-owners, a lot of these recipes aren't even ever written down. Yeah, they're just by, like, memory, like yeah. like the grandparents or great-grandparents or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like they, they just know how to make it. Right. And it's like, you know, they have this maybe tin pitcher uh, and they fill it up to the line in the pitcher. Who knows what <laughs> measurement that really is, you know? Right, yeah, nobody knows. It just use the pitcher to the line. Dump it in there. And then, you know, if it feels a little warm, you put some ice in the... But they just know the right way to, to do taste. it. To uh, taste. And I, I don't think this stuff gets memorialized a lot of the time. Yeah, it's too bad, right? Because, it is. Because, you know, you know like, 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 like the pizza mill, for example, it's like, it's like lost now. I, I hope not. I uh, wish yeah, there was a way to bring either. it back, but th that's the one thing with pizza. We can't bring people back that I know of, right? Um, yeah, but yeah, pizza yeah. evokes such uh, memories um, f and, yeah, and what, yeah, what feelings. It's it's amazing because that's one of my favorite questions to ask my uh, readers uh, maybe twice a year. I'll say, share with me one of your favorite pizza memories, and you get some vivid snapshots of somebody's life. And it's just, it, I light up reading it because... It's like, wow, I can't believe this simple food can take you back to this moment in time. Yeah. You know? And it's pretty, it's pretty neat when you hear that. It is, stories. you know, because it, it usually tends to be like a lot of childhood memories, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously we, we, we have memories, you know, you know, with as adults with pizza and whatever, but it usually does. It takes you back. Like when you, when you think of it, like even me, like I would just, I would just remember like getting pizzas on a Friday night at home and just like, I could just remember just like Friday night, like in the summer like hanging outside by the pool and getting getting some pizza delivered like that was like that was so you just i just remember that like mm -hmm. you know what i mean top of the world yeah and you know i have many uh pizza memories like first i'm very strange i could remember just about every pizza i've eaten in the last decade plus really? that i reviewed uh no i have help because i'm sort of journaling it okay. through reviews but you got them all in your head too yeah I, I, how I, the hell I, how i, I I don't know. I just go there. Like, I, I wish I could put some yeah. more useful stuff in my head. But um, somebody asked me about a, uh, you know, a specific pizza. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, really good. The sauce was a little chunkier. Um, I wish they cooked it a little more that time. But it was it but you just, even remember that. Yeah. Like I, you remember the consistency of it, at how it was how it was made. Most of the time I do. Wow. Uh, when, when somebody comes up to me and says, well, you know, have you ever tried this? I can usually recite from memory without checking my review or anything like that. I may not remember what score I get. Scores are not important to me, but the, the memory and the story and the feeling I had while I was there are, are much more important. Uh, but there are just so many pizza memories out there. I, I remember um, we'd go to this place, uh, my grandmother, um, before she passed w way long ago in my childhood, we would go grab a pre-made like old Ford shell, like, you know, just grab the shell and then we'd, we'd bring it home and we'd get the store-bought sauce, which I make my own sauce now, but, and then we'd get whatever ch bag of cheese there was and she'd, you know, we'd make it. But the, the, the strange thing I remembered uh, was we'd save the grocery bag, the paper bag that it came on, and that, that became the serving tray oh, for okay. us. So we'd, you know, cut the pizza on there. But, you know, making pizza with Graham is like just something I'll always cherish. It's amazing you know, memories that are attached to that. Yeah, that food for sure. Now you make your own sauce, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, and let me just say, most of the tomatoes that you can buy in the store are not the ones you want to make the sauce with. A lot of people will say, hmm, "Whoa, that's interesting." Well, if you add, you know, 
a pound of sugar to the sauce, then it sounds it's pretty good. Well, if you're buying quality tomatoes, uh, there's a company called Stanislaus. Uh, they're California. Do you know now. how to spell that? Uh, S T A N I S. Stan S. L S L A U S. Yeah. Okay. I just I want to look it up for myself, and I'll I'll tell you my story in a minute. But go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, and the other company is Bianco de Napoli. Two words. Okay. And with those quality of tomatoes, you literally need like a pinch of salt and a drizzle of good olive oil. And that will make, create up for you a sauce that is better than every single sauce you can buy pre-made in the store. Mm. Like next level stuff. And people are usually very uh, cynical and dismissive when I say this. And then they go do it. But is, it, is this just for sauce for pizza or could you use this for like other like uh, pasta sauces? Yeah. So same concept applies. Uh, great tomatoes will make your job of making a great sauce a heck of a lot easier. Mm. And they're not that much more expensive than, than just the regular. What's there. Yeah. yeah. Mom, are you listening? We got it. We got to try it. I want to try it. Yeah. Uh, Hit me up. I'll give you any tips you want. I, I walk people through constantly. At, when, at night before I go to bed, a lot of what I do is uh, pizza coaching, just texting back and forth. Um, you know, my, I can't get the bottom of my pizza to, to uh, char up or anything. Well, it doesn't look like yours. Well, did, did you measure the temperature of the stone in the oven before you put it in there? Because that's why it's white as a ghost. And uh, it's, it, it's interesting, the common threads of the mistakes people made. And the, the reason I know how to uh, solve them is because I've made all the same mistakes. I'm a, I'm a hands-on trial and error guy. Now, I do love to uh, talk with other people that know a lot more than me and just pick their brains and listen. Uh, but, you know, they like to share, so I like to share too. And I like to pass on any information or knowledge I might have. So hit me up anytime. Sweet. I'm going to probably be taking you up on that. We're going we're to be talking We're gonna be talking after this too. And you're going to give me that recipe? No, I'm kidding. You probably, do you, you, you hold your recipes? Uh, Not at all. I'm like, do you? you give them out? I'm open sourced. Really? I, yeah. Like the, the only reason why I, uh, I give it out is because I'm a serial experimenter. I'll, so you're I probably always changing it. Yeah. So once I post a recipe, two weeks later, it's usually out of date, right? So okay. I'll, um, I'll post a ref recipe with some caveats like this is the easy, basic way to make pan fried Sicilian pizza. Yeah, v V1, V2. Yeah. yeah. So then yeah. I'm working my way up to like the expert way that they really do it in a lot of the pizza shops here. Okay. But uh, yeah, so I think it's more important to learn the concepts and um, the variables with pizza making than it is to memorize, you know, a, a, a re certain recipe, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. But the, Interesting. Yeah, the the process is very important, but the ingredients are super important. Definitely. Yeah. So I have, uh, you know, my family. We have a a family <clears throat> sauce, you know, pasta sauce recipe, and you know, I'm gonna have to maybe I'm maybe gonna try some of these other tomatoes. I I, I typed them both in here so I don't forget, or I can just go back and rewatch this. But um, but yeah, I'm gonna try maybe try it with some of these other tomatoes and see what uh, see how it changes. It will change remarkably. So the, my favorite uh, meal in the world, people assume, is pizza, but it's actually my mother's spaghetti and meatballs. And uh, she uses what I would consider to be a, an inferior tomato, but that flavor is what I grew up with. That's what I know to be the greatest. So I brought her a big can of this uh, Stanislaus. It's called Tomato Magic. It's like a naturally sweet, it, no sugar added product. And I, I gave it to her, and she made the sauce with that. And I was like, well, "Mom, I hate to admit, but this is this is better." Uh, but I, yeah. you know, still get nostalgic about the OG recipe for sure. Yeah, same. I, you know, same thing with me. I think you know, probably my my favorite thing. You grow up, of course. It's funny we were talking about pizza memories, right? And having like you, know, you talk about uh, you know all the memories associated with pizza, and I said like a lot of them would be associated with your childhood, right? Uh, you know, but for me also too, one of the other big ones, and probably a bigger one than pizza is pasta and pasta sauce in my family. So my mom's side of the family is Italian. You know, my dad's side of the family is, is Irish. Um, but yeah, I, I really loved the, I loved growing up with the Italian food, right? And, you know, my grandmother who, you know, has obviously, you know, since passed away at this point, but uh, she had this, this sauce recipe and we just called it, you know, Grammy sauce, right? And, you know, a lot of the cousins, we all have it and we all make it and everybody, everybody probably has their own little variation of it, right? But all still pretty close to being, the same recipe, right? But um, but yeah, that's probably my my favorite dish. I actually I'm having it tonight when I go home, believe it or not. Fantastic. Like, <laughs> before I left, my wife, you know, we, we you know, we make it, we freeze it, and uh, 
you know, I had, I took it out and put it on the counter right before, right before it came in. So, oh, so that's great. What time should I show up? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, right after we're done here, you can, we can just head home with me and yeah, it'll be ready. It'll be ready when we, when we, when we get home. So one thing I noticed when I, we when can I, watch Bluey. There, that sounds perfect. Yeah. So, now, hey, let me ask you this question. Would you, would you be nervous if I were to take you up on that, which which I got to get home anyway. But um, I find one story. I remember I, I was uh, over at well, my wife now, but my girlfriend at the time, I was over uh, eating dinner at her house for the first time. And uh, I remember her mom was very stressed out because, you know, this food guy or whatever was coming up. <laughs> and, and I'm like, have you read my stuff? Like I'm the most, you know, positive, uh, you know, person out there. And I, I don't, I don't consider myself to be a critic. Like a critic implies I'm going to slice and dice, yeah. um, trash it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, maybe that's just in my own head, but slice and dice. I like that. Though. Uh, but if I did come over, how would you feel, um, with, you know, me trying your food? I mean, I guess I'd probably be a little nervous too. Maybe not as nervous as, as she was, but, um, but like, I, but I, but I will say like, um, I've always gotten a real lot of compliments about it. I used to, in, in when I was in college, my mom used to make it, freeze it, and I would take like like almost like a whole freezer full back to my apartment out in State College, and all my friends and like even a couple of neighbors, like they would, I would you know invite the, some of them over sometimes, not all the time because I didn't want to, we didn't, I didn't want to give all of it away because you know we, we we had a lot, but but when when I'm feeding a whole bunch of college kids, you know. And that's all they're eating. You know, mm-hmm. it's gonna go quick. So, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, everybody always complimented it, and I didn't, I didn't answer the question yet, but I will in a second. Uh, but everybody was always like, "Oh my god, this is the greatest thing ever." And of course, I'm obviously I'm biased, and I do think it's the greatest thing ever. You know, could it be better? Probably, right? But I will I will try it with with some of the ones you recommend. But but yeah, I mean, I, I'd love I'd love for you to try it. Like it's it, it, honestly because it is one of those things. Same thing like you said. Like it it is probably as simple as a dish as it is. Even though it doesn't, it's not simple. It takes like six to eight hours to make it. But it's it's one of those things for me that just it brings me back to childhood. Your cousins, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, and everybody getting together around the holidays. Like that's what that's like the memory of it. So you know what I mean? It's not just the pasta sauce. Like it's it's all of that. It's, it's family. Mm-hmm. Right, so it it makes it meaningful. Yeah. It's great. It's, it's but yeah. an amazing thing. But yeah, I, I don't think you would. You know, I know you're not a critic, like you said. But mm-hmm. and I don't think you would not like it. But um, but yeah, I guess I you know I guess I'd be a little nervous for you to try it just because, well, I'm anything I make it doesn't even matter if it's that you know not that I'm I'm no chef by any means. Like, I don't even you know what I mean I just you know I'm I just kind of you know wing it sometimes except for the sauce like the sauce is like a thing. It's mm-hmm. like so here's what I'm getting at with the question is um. Why does it matter what any other person in the world has to say about your sauce? It's yours. It's uniquely you. It's 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 brings back memories. It's meaningful. Like why would you even care what I had to say? And that's kind of the crux of where I'm at as a pizza reviewer, right? So I I don't I never understand why so many people gravitate toward my page, right? And I just love having a pizza conversation with them. But when I see, when I go into a place and I, I see maybe, you know, a, an owner, you know, squirming a little bit or trying to, you know, um, I, I just wonder why, because it's, I'm just any other person with an opinion. And I also sort of have a policy, if I don't like the pizza, I'm just not going to post it. I won't write the review. I'll just leave it alone because bad pizza will weed itself out of the market. They don't need me to sort of help the process along, right? And, uh, you know, I was also taught, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. But I, it's just kind of interesting to me when, when folks get nervous or different or uh, if somebody comes up to me in the supermarket, I never understand that because like, let's just go have a pizza, man. You know, what I mean? like I don't, I don't understand. Like I just I'm same as everybody else here. Yeah, I guess it's because like I want you to like it. Or I feel like I would want you to like it, mm-hmm. you know, because like I just, you know, for, I guess because to me it brings back like these like good memories. And it's like I want to evoke those same memories in you. And if you don't like it, then you won't feel good. Right. I guess that's kind of that's kind of my thinking. So. Right. So I I think there's two differences. Like there's a set of preferences that I have. Right. So I like a thin crust. I'm not a big sweet sauce guy. I like it to be crispy, uh, like mozzarella cheese. But like I obviously review a lot of stuff that isn't that. Right. But what I'm looking for is like 
what's special about each pizza. And I try to go into each review or if I'm at your house trying your sauce, I want to pick out those things that are special about it and share those things so that when others read about it or see it or, uh, you know, hear about it in, in audio form, they can say, I really think I like that. That aligns with my taste. Or I'm going to save my money and not go there because, you know, I – there's gobs of cheese everywhere and this is a sloppy mess. That's not my thing. But there's the other half of the people are saying, oh, I need to go there now, tonight. I'm, I'm calling. Uh, so that's really, I, I try to go in just as like, let's see something for the first time. And it's amazing and it's different. So I would be curious because like somebody's food says a lot about them, how they cook it and how they prepare it. And, uh, you know, and six to eight hours of simmering is a lot of love in that sauce. So. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Like it's, it is, and it, it's like a whole day. It, it, I mean, obviously it's, it's a whole day thing, you know, and it's not like, oh, hey, let's make the sauce quick. It's like, we have, you have to prepare for it. You have to like know that you're going to make it. You know, obviously you have to have a lot of things because, you know, we, I make like, you know, pots like this, this big, can't, people can't see it, like this big, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of ounces. I don't know. I don't know how many, but a lot. Uh, but yeah, so it's like, you know, you got to have all that stuff ready. Right. And, you know, for the next day, but then same thing, it's the, it's the simmering and stirring it like every 15 minutes. I hope I'm, I hope I'm right about that mom. So it doesn't burn on the bottom. Right. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it is, it's a process. And like, and I enjoy that process. Like as much as like somebody would say like, oh my God, like, what do you do all day? Oh, I'm like, well, I make the sauce. And they're like, you just made that all day. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and people are like, well, why don't you just buy something from the store? I'm like, ugh, I won't even eat. Like, I don't think I've ever really even had any store-bought sauce. Can you believe that? Oh, well. Uh, I'm sure there's some good ones out there. But. So uh, I married into a uh, a ragu prego uh, sauce uh, family here. So I, I was I always grew up with, you know, you made the sauce. Uh, you know, we probably had it once a week, I would think, if I, rem if I remember correctly. But my wife's used to, uh, you know, store-bought jarred <laughs> sauce. So we sort of had a, you know... I've kind of transitioned over that for a little while, even though it's just, you know, not something I yeah. really enjoyed. So then when I do get to make the sauce and it's a whole event, it's you know, thing. But, uh, we're like an on the go family. So I don't have a lot of time to, you know, do that all day on a Sunday. Sure. We're usually running all over the place. Yeah, but, same. Uh, it is fun. The other thing we do, uh, my daughter and I, during COVID, we started making our own pasta. We Ooh. got the little attachment for the, for the mixer. Yeah. Oh, game changer. Yeah. Delish. And what a cool, like, you're like, man, I'm a couple eggs, a little salt and some flour and you're making your own pasta. And it was so simple. I'd never done it until you know, I. Until the pandemic. To... But yeah, um, that was that was a really cool experience. And like you can get attachments for like 20 bucks or something. But, yeah. Um, I like the the powered one because it's, you know, makes it a little easier. For sure. Yeah. But. Great memories made there. Yeah, making making your own pasta. Maybe I'll have to try that next time. Like, cause we just made the sauce like not long ago, so we still have like a decent amount left, right? It's still gonna last us a little while. But uh, that next time, maybe that I go to do the the this, this when I have my sauce day, uh -huh. you know, uh, maybe I'll do the maybe I'll I'll find and do the the pasta too. A little multitasking. Try it out. It's very rewarding. Yeah, it doesn't taste. To, in my estimation, totally different texture, totally different taste. Way better. Very, very in every way, way better. Yeah. 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 What, like when you when you buy it, though, what do you typically get? Like, if you just buy like regular, you know, box and you know, pasta in the box, like what's your? Yeah, um, what's your I like go -to? Barilla. Okay. I'm yep. Kind of into that, but uh, I forget the one in the red box that I, I grew up on. It was like P and G or something. I, I don't think think they're around anymore. Okay. But I used to have this distinct red box that we would we would always have at home. Usually, you know. Buy one get one or something like yeah. that. That's what we, yeah, we'd have yeah, that. yeah. But man, yeah, the pasta. It's a uh, pasta sauce. It's a thing. And like I've always said, like even all my cousins were like, we should, uh, we should like ball this up and sell it. And it's like, I don't know. Like I think about it. I mean, nobody's ever really critiqued it. I don't think. But maybe they're just lying. But I, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, it's worth a shot, right? So yeah. uh, I did a little collaboration with. Um, all the guys in Dunmore that are making their own sauce now. I, I, this is twice I'm drawing a blank on easy things I should know. Um, but anyway, they're 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 known for their uh, their sauce okay. in the restaurant. So they they went ahead and they started jarring it, jarring it. And the guys, it, the guy with the sauce is his sort of tagline, okay. right? Yeah. So, um, but man, I, I tried four different ones that they have, and uh, it's Carmela's. And uh, is that the name? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. And uh, so. 
man, it does not taste like a jarred sauce, right? So I made, they have a Fra Diavolo sauce. I, I made a seafood Fra Diavolo pizza with it, and it was it was bad. Wow, that like, sounds really not good. Not because of me, because of the sauce. It was, okay. it was It was good. So those guys are doing good stuff. It's like maybe a, a, a couple bucks more than the other guys, but it's it tastes like yeah i'm a, I'm a big uh, fra diavolo sauce guy oh yeah oh yeah where's your favorite place to get it well um one place right up by us uh is called uh adelina's i have to get there dude get there and their <sighs> pizza too by the way i mean not gonna lie i mean we get we, we get takeout there once or twice a week no kidding yeah we, we, live, we live very nearby um but yes i mean uh get the grandma pizza it's a thin you know, square, very, you know, thin, thin crust. I think you'd, I think you'd like that. But by the way, it comes, I think it comes standard with sweet sauce. So you have to tell them regular sauce because I know you don't like sweet sauce, right? Well, it's not that I don't like yeah, sweet sauce. Yeah, but you I prefer, order the right? standard, whatever the standard okay, is. Okay, well, I think, I think, which is weird, I, I think maybe, I could be wrong, but I think they're, when they make their grandma's, their grandma pizza, it comes standard with sweet sauce. I don't know if that's normal or not. I don't know, but whatever their standard is, that's yeah. what I would get. Okay, right. Okay. So, and it's good. It is good. It's so good, but I, and I do like sweet sauce, by the way, but I just prefer that pizza with regular sauce. Okay. Just, you know, Maybe. my my opinion. Take it or leave it, you know? It's worth a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're sitting here in right? you know, the hallowed grounds of the pizza mill. That's right. Right? Yeah. Pray to the pizza gods. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, but yeah, Adeline's has a great uh, uh, Fra Diavolo, too, whenever we decide to get, like, a good, like, pasta dish like that. Mm. I love it. I, uh, my favorite is at Anthony's in Old Forge. They give you this... I don't uh, to call it a bowl would be an understatement, but you know Big. it's like a yeah. vat of just. <laughs> I gotta go there. Yeah, it's it, it's incredible. Um, so, um, it's you know lobster, shrimp, everything, jumbo, just oh, delicious man. and like pretty spicy, but like not gonna crush you. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just very well done there. They do they do a great job on that. Yeah. So yeah, fra diavolo. That's one of my that's one of my favorite dishes. I would say, like, if we were going out for a special meal, that would probably be my first choice. It, it, it usually is mine too. Yeah. For for like a place, you know, going out like that, like it's that's usually my it's usually my go to. You can't lose that. Yeah. That's oh, great. and um, uh, over in Exeter, um, what's the restaurant in Exeter? It's a Friedman restaurant now. Um, hold on, I gotta find this. Uh, is um, right on my own. Greco's. 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 So you know, not obviously they're not a pizza place, uh, but. Uh, Greco's, Greco's restaurant, uh, Fra Diavolo, that one, that one's also, well, I used to live over that way. And when, when we lived over that way, that was every time we went there, I mean, my wife, we would just get the same thing. Like we would just get that dinner all the time because it, wrong with that. it was just solid. It was like, like I said, that's like, that's my go-to, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, get yourself up to, uh, to Adelina's and maybe make a pit stop at my house for some sauce. Uh, but yes, you pizza, pizza, Adelina's man. They got, they got a lot of. Yeah, not that you have to get the grandma, but like they've got just I don't know all kinds of. I follow them. I follow like I don't know fifteen hundred different local pizza places, so they're def- definitely one of them. So I've seen their work. Uh, I'll definitely check with you before I go, so that yeah. you know either, maybe we could have a guest review or something like Ooh, that. Ooh, yeah. If if Pop goes listening, I I owe him like a review from like seven years ago. <laughs> So, so yeah, so he's, he's going to be sad when I, I get snuck in there before him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Popco. Love you, bro. <laughs> yeah. So you have Adelina's, and I think he has like, Art, not Arturo's. Um, he had another A place okay. uh, that we have to go to in the DuPont area. Okay. So yeah. we'll get there. Yeah. So yeah, head up to uh, head up to Adelina's sometime, man. Like I said, I'm, we'll do. We, we, we eat it all the time. So, you know, whenever uh, whenever, if you're ever up that way. Just let me know. Give me a shout. Will do. Yeah. That's and they, and they have, they, they make it right there. Like you, like right when you walk in, I mean, it's, you know, restaurant, you can sit down. It's like, you know, they have like nice fine dining too and a bar and the whole bit. Um, but the counter, like they have, and I, I don't know if I hope I'm not saying it wrong, but the, I'm pretty sure they have like a, it's like a big, I, I think it's like a, a brick oven pizza. I believe mm-hmm. I should know. I should know. Like I look, I look at it every time I go in there, but I'm not like a, I'm not like a, pizza guy like you to know like you probably if you saw you'd be like oh that's the blah 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 blah. you know what i mean i feel like you would know right off the bat but i wouldn't i'm like trying to like look it up like right now as if i could like see it on their website (laughs) or something (laughs) uh but yeah like they make it like right there like the owner and like there's a couple other workers that are all right there like you could see like they're literally tossing it right there topping the whole bit putting it in the oven like you watch it you can watch them actually make it that's my like favorite. there's something about that too there's this like romance about it like right especially when they're throwing the dough yeah. right i remember when i was uh you know uh, i first became a dishwasher this introverted little nerd 
and that's a little oversized nerd guy. Um, I would I would just look up to the front. Where they had a very similar setup that you're describing, and you know there was always this. You know the the pizza guy would toss it. And you just see the kids pressing their face against the the cooler in the front, the glass cooler, and then people are just looking and checking it out. And it's not that I ever wanted that attention, so to speak, but I wanted to be able to do that because, like, it, to me, it was just such a skill and such like a craft, and there's just this art to it, right? I'm I'm like a numbers guy by trade, but like I, I have a creative side too, right? As you can see, I like yeah. to create content, but food is a really powerful way to express yourself. And that was all I ever wanted to do once I, you know, was scrubbing pots and pans in the back. Now, I did my best to be the best dishwasher I could, but moving up the ranks to pizza guy, that was like, that was a big deal to me in my my young career, you know? So, yeah, so you started off as a dishwasher? I did, yeah. I, I think it's where everybody starts, right? I think so. Right? Yeah, it was cool. I, I walked in for an application. I think the kid uh, that was doing the dishes that day didn't show up. <laughs> so you got the job. They, they <laughs> threw me an apron. I, I still had like a, a polo shirt on because I thought I was going in for like a formal interview or something. So he, he asked me Probably if I ruined, could start now. that, huh? Ruined, yeah. ruined the polo shirt. Yeah, yeah but you yeah. know, it was a great, it was total chaos. But like the people that worked there were not people that I would like have probably found outside of the workplace but oh my god to be in the trenches with them and that the way they had your back and like we were you know we'd get crushed on a friday night just slammed but like you always i loved friday nights because like it was we were going to war man and we were going to do everything we could to make sure these people got good pizza um, so i love that but the camaraderie and like man we would hang out like throwing the baseball till two three four in the morning after work just because like what else were you going to do at that time? But like really great experiences in the pizzeria business. And I, I really have a lot of fond memories there. Yeah. So one thing I thought was interesting that you said is, you know, you're, you're a numbers guy, but you're also creative, which is typically I feel like a lot of people aren't, don't, aren't both. Like I'm not like, I'm a numbers guy to a point to understand, you know, business and, you know, uh, uh, to, you know, enough to, to get by. Right. But it's like not anything like I take pride in being like the numbers guy. Like I actually like, can't stand having to crunch them oh I got <laughs> right like i can't stand it like you know all that stuff right but like but i but i love this stuff like i love creating the content like and you know you obviously do this too with with everything you do but um yeah like like i said i'm i've never been good at math but but i think also maybe i just didn't never really applied myself as much just because i just didn't like it mm -hmm. and because if i didn't i didn't like it so i didn't apply myself so obviously i wasn't that good at it like i know i could probably be better at it if i want to but it's not really something i want to do right i prefer you know, to really focus most of my time and energy at what I'm really good at, double, triple down on, on what I'm best at, which is this right here, all this stuff. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I just find that very interesting, you know, that, that you have both, both, both sides, uh, of, of the brain working for you. Yeah. I, I think it's, I, I, I'm, I'm the type that always needs to be busy, right? But um, I, I do love numbers. Now, I'm not a math person. Like, higher-level math, calculus oh, yeah, is like yeah, my yeah. worst yeah. nightmare. But, uh, it, you know, finance and accounting, I do love it, right? And I think that these two things are so dissimilar to one another that it, it, it just keeps me in balance, right? So I have this, like, numeric, you know, business side, and then I have this, like, passion project for pizza uh, that – you know, I just do it for fun because I just love it. And I can't, you know, I have to express it. You know, I have to get it out there. And I'm glad that people are along, you know, for the ride. I'd still be doing this if I had zero followers. In fact, I never expected anyone to ever read what it was that I was doing. It, it, I just sat down one day, I, you know, it was a, I always wanted to have a website, right? And um, I also had this passion for pizza. And uh, I I was in uh, going back for my MBA in grad school, and one of the assignments was to create a blog. And in 2012, blogging was not cool in northeastern Pennsylvania, right? Uh, so I said, you know, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to make it about pizza. So I, I started, and I took the assignment way more seriously than I needed to. Uh, but that was sort of a moment that I said, wow. This feels pretty good, right? And literally, I was anonymous. I put it out there. I didn't necessarily know what a blog was at the time, right? It was just sort of like writing an email that you publish, kind of. It was very simple. I was using the Google Blogger platform and uh, never, ever expected anybody to ever read it. I didn't even want anybody to read it. I didn't care, right? But um, and then, 
you know, this all changed at one point. A, a, a buddy of mine called me, or I think we were texting at the time, but um, he said, hey, I'm at um, Amberdonia Bakery. It was in Dixon City at the time. And uh, this lady in front of me uh, was talking about this guy that goes around writing about pizza. And uh, and he's, he said, he's, you know, here's the website. And I'm here because he gave it five stars. And uh, I said, oh, well, uh, that guy is actually me, right? So I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell my friends. I was just doing this. And it was like, that was like a coming out party of NEPA Pizza Review, right? And then um, shortly thereafter, I was getting a lot of demand to not like show your face, I guess, or show yourself, but do video. I never ever wanted to do video now these headphones here are giving me my voice back and that is a, a horrific too, too sound <laughs> right uh but uh I, so i said like am i gonna stand in front of this camera and i'm gonna film myself eating pizza and it's the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard um and i'll tell you what i've been doing it i don't know how long i've been doing video probably six seven years um I feel ridiculous every time I do it. I never get comfortable. I just, you know, I feel like I just know that that is the way people want to consume my message. It's the best way that I can support local businesses. So I do it. That's interesting. How do you feel in front of the camera? I'm like a rock star, man. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) No, no, man. Like same thing. So the the funny part about like me with this, like same thing, like you said how like, you know, you started it with no intentions whatsoever for it to ever become what it became. So like I have a very similar story here. Like I just this thing started before it was a podcast. It was just photos, still photos. That's it mm-hmm. on social media, and then it went from still photos to an, an audio only podcast. Okay, so this started back and the photos were in 2019. Okay, so 2019, all of 2019 was just photos only for a whole year. Then uh, March of 2020, which everybody knows is uh, you know two weeks to flatten the curve. I just I started I started I took those photos and you know, I was taking photos with other people, but I ended up taking the people that were coming, taking photos with me and turned it into a podcast because people want to hear, or like you said, view, see, consume the media in a different way other than just reading the written word on Facebook, right? Or on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, same thing. I hated my voice. And I was like, ah, man, like I can't do a, I can't do a podcast. I don't even even know. I think I've listened to some other podcasts, you know, at the time and I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what the hell that is or how to do it, right? So, but yeah, so that's so I started the podcast then in 2020. And then it, I didn't even start full video until, uh, what was it? It was um, 2022. Yeah. So I've only been doing full video for just over a year and a half. And like, I should have started it sooner. But the reason I didn't, part of the reason, I kept just like making excuses like, oh, it's going to cost way too much money to buy all these cameras and all this lighting, et cetera, right? Um, which is just an excuse, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll feel, I'm gonna I'm gonna rant about that in a minute too. I feel like, but uh, but yeah, like it was it was it was partly like, oh, I made the excuse of like, oh, it's gonna cost too much money, and I wasn't I didn't really have many sponsors. Like I had a couple sponsors, but if I did that, then it was gonna I was just paying the bills, right? Like the money that I was bringing in was just enough to cover the cost to produce the show at that point, right? And it's like, well, if I start full video, like my my production cost is gonna like go up five times the five times the dollar. I'm like, where am I going to get that? Right. And then pay back all the equipment. Right. So, um, but yeah, so then the other part was I didn't want to see myself. Like I was like, Oh, I have to see myself on camera. Just like I had the same fear of like hearing my own voice, you know, just like you, you, you said, it's like, Oh, I hated my own voice. Then didn't want to see myself on camera. Then obviously I got over it. Like, and I'm, I'll say like mostly, yeah, I'm pretty much mostly over it, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. It is a weird thing, uh, but now it's like this is like the main focus of my show is video. I mean, obviously audio too, but like it's a it's a weird thing. Um, so here and here we are. But I, I feel you know I go back to I was following you since you used to take the photos sitting on the stack, right? <laughs> right yeah. And uh, you know I feel much more close to you, right? This is our first time meeting in yeah, person, right. but I feel a lot closer to you because. The video really helps me understand who you are and what you're about and what your guests are about. So it's it's really a necessary medium. It is. Right? And I should have started it sooner. Right. I should have started it sooner, too. Yeah. But I, I didn't want to. I, I was afraid. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Excuses. And um, but it all works out. Right? Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, when I first like when I when I was like, hey, maybe I'll make this into a podcast like those photos. 
some like the, the 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 suggestions I got were a podcast or a YouTube show, a show on YouTube. And at the time, I'm like, at that time, I was definitely like, I'm not spending that kind of time and money. Like that's a lot of time and money and effort to build a YouTube channel and oh, and the whole video. I mean, the video obviously is YouTube, but um, but yeah. So like, man, like looking back on it, not that I regret anything, because I don't, right? But you know, if anyone's listening, any other content creators, so we had this conversation the other day of like, you know, just giving value out to other you know, other content creators, a lot of content creators that follow me, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty that follow you as well, mm-hmm. is just like, just do it. And, you know, don't really worry about how you look or whatever, like you're gonna grow significant. Like you and I were talking again, even before we started, like how like how much your content has grown, like your reviews and just the way you do it and how your your content, the quality of it has gotten so much better. And same thing with mine, like, you know, I started like my, my show obviously has gotten so much better now. Not that I'm not proud of the early ones, right? Like, but it's just gotten so much better over time because it's just practice and it's just consistency and just constantly doing it. So, you know, again, like for any content creators out there that are looking to start any type of content, like I always just say, just do it and just put it out there because you'd be, I think you'd be surprised at how many people would actually like it. I totally agree. And when people reach out, a lot of them have the idea that they want to do it to make money. And if those folks that reach out, I say, unless you know you have some specialized, you know, algorithm experience yeah. in YouTube or how to really grow fast, do not. Yeah, that's the that's the wrong reason. Right. If you have something you love, whether it's dancing like uh, you know, in, to, to certain beats on TikTok. Bluey, maybe what doing it, like a, the Bluey dance. Yeah. You know? Or like, you know, maybe you're doing a Bluey play by play episode. I don't know. But if you have a unique specialized talent or view, I say go for it, right? And put it out there. And who cares if nobody listens? You're not really doing it for them, right? Now, if you're doing it for the money, that's a whole different thing. But um, if I believe if you're authentic, and you're genuine, and you put out content that is either informative, entertaining, uh, or just useful to people, they'll they'll come. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree, hundred percent. And that was the same thing with me too. Like when I first when I first started it, it was like um, I had no intention of ever actually monetizing it. It was just to be, and to be honest, it actually cost me money. It cost me money for a real long time, way more than just one year, like multiple years. Like I'm not ashamed to admit that because. You know, again, I wasn't doing it for the money. You know, now I will say, like, obviously, I've monetized it significantly. Well, clearly, I bought the old pizza mill, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Uh, but that's not that, that's still not my goal. That's not like why I'm doing it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that just came because of what you said, the authenticity, right, and the purpose and the mission and everything behind it. And like I said, I, when I started it, I had no intention of like making money off it. I didn't even think I could. Like, I was like, oh, maybe I can make a few hundred bucks or like you know, well, at least enough just to cover like a couple hundred bucks a month for, you know, production purposes and stuff. Cause I actually don't edit my show, believe it or not. Um, I've never edited a single episode of this entire show in history, which is crazy to, to think about. But, um, but I've always had somebody do all the editing for me and of course they get paid to do it. Um, but yeah, I never had the intention of making money from it. And I think, you know, I think that's why that's a big part of the reason, like you said, that's big, the big part of the reason why it did well is, is for that. And it's just, it's authentic and I like it. I like having, I'm just genuinely curious and interested in people, you know, like you, like in just everybody. And, and I don't care who you are, what you do, what your background is, what you d- have done, haven't done, how old, how young, it doesn't even matter. Cause like everybody has value to offer. And a lot of people don't think that. A lot of people think like, oh, well, no one's gonna care what I have to say. And I think we all think that about ourselves sometimes. And I think we all sometimes need to just take a step back and realize like, it's not that, it's not that, that that's just you in your own head. And if you can get past that and just just have a conversation with people, like you'd be surprised at how much value you would probably actually be speaking that you just don't realize until you do it. And then other people be like, hey, that was really valuable. Like that was really cool. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just like you just put it out there and just get started. Right. So when I got started, I was just on the stacks. We'll be back in a flash after a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Elevation Wellness, NEPA's premier wellness center located on Monday Street in Wilkes-Barre. From pro athletes to busy parents, Elevation Wellness is leading the conversation when it comes to bettering your health through integrative medicine. 
Founded by NEPA native Louis Helmecki, Elevation Wellness offers physician-formulated and guided treatments that are administered by registered nurses. To learn more about how you can experience the benefits of IV vitamin therapy, multivitamin booster shots, non-invasive aesthetics, or peptide, NAD, red light, and compression therapy, visit elevation-wellness.com or follow them on Instagram at elevationwellnessnepa. All On The Stacks listeners will receive 10% off their first purchase with code STACKS at checkout. Call 570-762-9400 or visit elevation-wellness.com to book your appointment today. Elevation Wellness, taking your health to new heights. Welcome to the future. While you're hearing this ad in the present, the Center for Technology Innovation at Lackawanna College is preparing students for the jobs of tomorrow in the world of advanced technology. The Center for Technology Innovation will offer undergraduate degree programs, corporate training, as well as short-term stackable certificates in areas such as robotics, cybersecurity, electric vehicles, virtual reality, and artificial intelligence. Based at a 90,000-square-foot facility in downtown Scranton, Pennsylvania, the Center for Technology Innovation is located two hours from the major cities of New York, New Jersey, and Philadelphia, and is just 15 minutes from a commercial airport in a region thriving with tourist attractions and a vibrant restaurant, educational, and cultural scene. Lackawanna College is a proven industry-leading innovator. But don't just take my word for it. Fast Company even recognized Lackawanna College's reputation for innovation by naming them to their top 10 list as one of the world's most innovative companies. For more information or to enroll, call 877-346-3552 or visit lackawanna.edu. I have the privilege of representing people who have been injured through no fault of their own and they come to us and they place a lot of trust in us and we represent them against corporations and insurance companies and we make those companies know that our clients have a story that they deserve compensation and I'm proud to be able to do that for our clients at Anzalone Law. To learn more, visit Anzalone Law offices online at anzalonelaw.com. And now we're back on the stacks. So when I got started, I was just writing about pizza. That was my task, right? That's what I wanted to do. And then later on, you sort of figure out what the concept and the mission is. Unless, you know, I don't know too many people who plan out uh, their, their mission, unless they're really profit focused. But like, I didn't know really what I was doing. But now I can articulate to you, I'm here to connect people and pizza. That's what I do. I'm going to show you pizzas that you're either going to connect with or not. Uh, I'm going to save you money if you don't want to do it. Uh, Go try that. But also, I'm here to teach you how to make your own pizza at home, right? And so I really, that's my mission, connect people in pizza. And I can, it took me almost a decade to realize that that's what I was doing. Like, and uh, my, my values are like, I got to be authentic. Like uh, when, when I get proposed, uh, you know, Hey, here's an endorsement deal. We, if you do this, if you share this post, we'll pay you X amount of dollars. And I say, well, how does that add value to my audience? It, it has nothing to do, you know what I mean? Um, with anything they're interested in. And quite frankly, I'm not interested in it, you know? Um, so, it's it just uh, sticking to your values and being authentic is so important. I think, you know, selling out is, you know, something people get criticized for. And there's different ways to do that. And I think you can also do that organically if you're honest with, with folks. And, you know, I have, to my knowledge, I haven't jumped the shark or anything like that or, uh, you know. But uh, I, I do my best to stay humble, stay true to the mission, and just get out there and enjoy every pizza. And the same way, you know, like I came in here thinking he's going to ask me about you know, all these different pizza questions because that's what all these have. And we started talking about everything but pizza, which tells me you authentically do care about the person sitting across from you. So I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. And because it's, it's, you know how easy it is to have a pizza conversation with you? Anyone can do that. Can it, can anyone just have a conversation with you about something else? Like, probably not, right? So like, that's the, that's the thing. It's like, you know, whenever I do these, like, of course, you know, obviously we, we hit on pizza and, you know, we're not going to not hit on it, right? But at the same time, like, I want to know about you, like your, your, your family, your history, like what you've done, like the, like I'm Googling your freaking name and trying to find out what it means. <laughs> Seriously. Like I'm no, no joke. Like this is like what I'm doing. Like, because like, again, it's like, I don't want, you know, I, I don't ever want like an episode of my show to be like all the typical questions, you know, like, oh, it's a, like a 
interview, like, you know, I, I try to make it more conversational. Of course, I'm asking, obviously asking a lot of questions, but make it more conversational and just, you know, humanize things. And it's not just like, again, you can go anywhere and people can talk to you about pizza and you can talk about pizza all day long. Right. But there's probably a lot of other parts to gym, you know, and, and that, and that, that goes with anybody. And I think too, like with, again, content creation and, and being authentic and podcasting specifically, I'll say is, you know, you need to be able to have a conversation some, about something else besides like what that person does for a living. It's like, cause that's the easiest. That's just, that's the go-to, you know, like if you're a musician, like, of course we're going to talk about music. Right. But like, let's talk about all the other things too, you know? And if you can't do that, like it's to me, it, that's, it's not as authentic. That's how I feel. I, I agree. And I, I appreciate your style. And just, just to kind of take that point and run it in another direction. Now, we're having a really nice free flowing conversation. I'm actually not a good conversationalist at all. My wife is a wonderful conversationalist. So, you know, we'll be at a party and she's the charming one in the center of it all. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I do you're, the, my, and you're the numbers guy in the corner, yeah, right? Yeah. I do my best, but I'm usually, you know, checking the phone more than I should be. Uh, but pizza is an icebreaker for me. Sure. And, um, you know, and I, I do like to talk about more than what's your favorite pizza, right? Like, you know, because to me, but it does help me connect with people a lot better because I'm just naturally, I think people are a lot of times disappointed when they see me out because like I'm, I'm a bit awkward, right? And I, I just, um, I, you know, I don't know what to say and I, I, you know, but pizza breaks that barrier down. And the next thing you know, we're, oh, hey, I see you're wearing an Eagles jersey or, you know, this type of thing. When normally I just probably would have put my head down and kept going. And that's not, not because I'm not interested. I'm just not good at talking to people. Um, so, but I just wanted to make yeah. that point that pizza is like the weather. It starts conversations for me. Right, right. Yeah. And I, th I think I think that's, again, like it's, it's, it is, it's a connection. And one of the things that it reminded me, you said earlier, like you said uh, pizza and, or maybe it was just food in general. Um, is, is there's expression and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think for you, not only is it an icebreaker in from that way, but it's, you know, it is a way for you to express yourself, but then you expressing yourself creates those connections because I think by you expressing yourself through food, pizza, whatever it is, not just pizza, but beyond pizza, you're expressing yourself and people connect to that and emotion. And that it's just that people connect to that. And like, same thing here. Right. Like, you know, I, I have this, this, this slogan It's right on the cover art. It's called uh, real talk on purpose. I use the hashtag as well. Real hashtag real talk on purpose. And it's got like a dual meaning. And I know I probably said this too many times and everybody probably has heard this a million times, but you know, the dual meaning is like, it's real, it's real talk. Meaning like we're having like a real conversation, right? Mm -hmm. We're not just, you know, just chit chatting about like nothing. Right. We're having a good, genuine, real conversation. We're then we're doing it on purpose. Like we're actually you know, purposely just having a good conversation, but then it's also a real talk about your purpose. Like we're having a real conversation about your purpose, like, and why you do what you do, you know? And again, like for you, like the, you know, food, it's a, it's, you know, the whole thing is icebreaker, it's expression. And like, same thing here, like all this content, and everything that I do, like, this is all like expression. Like also a lot of, I feel like a lot of my guests in a way are also like, a, maybe like a, a, partly a reflection of me, which I know maybe, maybe sound kind of weird, but like I, you know, I'm also like I'm, I'm attracted to people in a way. When I say attracted, maybe, I don't mean like you know like I Jim. I love you. You're a good looking guy. I did say it was amazing and handsome. By the way, I'm amazing and handsome, um, and uh, I'm sticking to it. But no, but it's like I'm attracted to people who like again maybe have the same values, right? I can tell from all your content that you're just an authentic guy, like truly, truly, truly an authentic guy. And again, like you said, we never met till today. We've talked. We've known each other for probably a long time but just through social media but again i'm attracted to people that i know that could you know that can have good conversations and you know like I, like i know like i could just tell without ever speaking to you before i could just tell that you know you're not doing it for the wrong reasons and i and 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 you can see through you can see that in your content as with anyone else's and i feel like i hope people believe and feel the same about mine because when somebody's not being authentic you could literally i mean i feel like i'm a pretty good judge of character too but you could see right through that stuff and you can see when people are just, you know, maybe doing it for just for the money or, or whatever, or just aren't being real, you know? And I don't know. I'm just all about just being real, real talk on purpose, man. That's, 
it's all about authenticity, really. And that takes you so much further. You know, I see if you if you take a small payday on the front end, there's a cost there. Right. I've I've gotten some attractive offers. and I'm like, oh, man, this, you know, not huge money or anything like people think because you're on the computer that you're you're rich, which <laughs> yeah, is right. certainly not the case. Lucky. Like, it's, as you said, I, I poured a ton of money into this for years, um, you know, with no revenue whatsoever. And there's something to be said about that, by the way, for real. Like, there, I'm just like that, you know, like you said, like same thing, like you put money into into this and you weren't making money. Right. You know, so I mean, just that just that alone and I, I cut you off, but just that alone just really proves like how important it is to you and how authentic, because if you're just doing it for the money, like you wouldn't have been doing it because you're like losing you're losing money. But you see the long term vision and the value and everything else that went with it. Sorry. Oh, well, no, totally. 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 And and look, uh, I um I, I, there, I had another inflection point in my uh, sort of pizza career. Um, I was. I was. I had a lot of people saying, "Well, why don't you charge people for this? And why don't you do this? Or why don't you tell the pizzeria owners to give you fifty bucks and give you the pizza?" I said, "No, I just w- will not charge a pizzeria owner if I'm this supposed small business or um, supporter. Why would I charge him for the pizza? I'm going to go in like every other customer because I want to do the best I can to describe to fellow potential customers." that this is what a, an experience is like. Now, sometimes, yeah, I'm back in the kitchen and I'm happy, like, can't, you know, I'm not going to wear a disguise or something into the place or send, I, don't, I can't afford to send a surrogate in or anything like that. Gotcha. You know, I think, um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, but no, that was something I never would do. But um, I had a really frank uh, discussion with uh, Mike View, who runs uh, Pancakes and Protein Shakes. Yeah, shout, on, to, shout out to Mike View, by the way. What a great dude. Yeah. And, and like, he's got this cool vibe and he's like, you know, obviously very fit and everything, but uh, he's also just a great dude. Um, him and his wife do or, uh, do a lot of great things down there. Um, but they, um, and they have a, a cool dog that I always see on, the, on, on their social. They raise a lot of money for charity around Philly. But um, he's like, you know, he was just real with me for a little bit because I, I don't take myself seriously. I don't really think that I'm important, so to speak, as far as my voice in the community. And he said, look, bud, you're the, like the OG pizza guy here and like in the area. And like you've been doing this forever. Like you deserve to start getting a little bit of yours, you know. And I was like, I just I don't see it as a business. I don't it's. Um, you know, and he's like, well, you got to start doing, and he gave me a few suggestions and whatnot, and we could take this offline, but really the catalyst was like, it's not wrong to make a few bucks off of what you're doing. Right. And, um, I am not a salesman at all, but the, the, the route I found to, to pay for my pizza habit was affiliate links. Right. So when I tell you those tomatoes are the ones well, it'd be nice if you, you know, it won't cost you anything else, but I, on Amazon, if you use my link, then, you know, it kind of helps me out. Um, so um, Mike sort of made me uh, look at it a different way. But at first I felt like, am I jumping the shark? Am I, am I like selling out here? And uh, then, I, then I thought, no, um, this was a way to buy better cameras to like get better uh you know cameras here now i'm carrying three phones around right (laughs) but um it was it was a better way to you know buy um one of the lighting i I use loom cube lights uh, because they're portable everything i do is about speed and portability um and lo and behold the pizzas look like they actually should look right because i'm you know my first uh review was done with a flip phone it looked like trash like just (laughs) terrible nobody would want to buy the pizza right um that but um, but I got a lot of feedback over the years that like, hey, this is really, you, you know, your audio is terrible on your videos, your video quality is terrible. But I don't take those as insult. I take those as like, thank you for the feedback. Yeah, right? I love that. Yeah. I love that feedback. If somebody stops by and says, you know, appreciate the content, but really didn't like this, um, you know, and... I don't know. There's there's one in particular, Scott Cannon. I I never met him in person, but he's he he must be a, a photog because he's always like, at eh, you got to get those road mics and this and that. And, and man, this guy he's he's got me on the right path a few times too. So a lot of people help, and I, anybody that wants to get into social media, I think they need to realize that it's a two way conversation, right? Just the same way we're doing it here, but. Um, 
every comment, I try to read them if I have time. I try to read and respond to every comment because they have value. And if you read what they're actually saying and not the words, and if you don't take a defensive position with it, you can learn a lot and you can grow a lot faster. I always say my content sort of writes itself because somebody's going to ask a question or somebody says you should. They might just directly tell you what to do. And you say, well, yeah, everyone else would love to see that, right? So, you know, it, interacting with your, um, with your followers is just so critical, I think. And really, I don't care how many followers I have. I just want really good ones. And whether that's five or 20,000 or whatever, I just want really good people the same way that you want really good guests to be in here and talk in pizza with me every day. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and I want to go back to your how you said about like the affiliate link stuff. So I feel like creators like us sometimes like I even myself again, like everybody knows my stuff's monetized. It's not a secret, right? And like even sometimes myself, I'm even a little ashamed to give myself a plug and tell people, hey, use that affiliate link. I'm not going to make a killing on it. But, you know, if 50 people use it, then it's like, OK, now I could pay for you know, the new stu part of, you know, maybe, maybe it'll help me pay for, get me one new microphone for that mm -hmm. back room. You know, it's not like I'm making millions of bucks here, you know, you know, like, like even right here, I'm just gonna give him a shout because it's been sitting here on the table this whole time. Sweat tent, right? So, you know, sweattent.com, use code OTS, you'll get a hundred dollars off, you know, like great product. I believe in it, you know, and you know, again, there are all the, those links are also in the, in the uh, description of the show. So if anyone's listening or watching, uh, all those links will be in the description. They are affiliate links and it's very obvious, right? But, um, you know, sometimes like I'm sometimes like, oh, I can't, yeah, I feel, I feel guilty like saying that, but like, there's nothing wrong with it. And like you said, like, you know, if people do buy through my affiliate link, which like, please do or use the code, right? Like, again, that money is going to help just create better content here and just further this, mm -hmm. like further this, this mission, the whole thing, like all of it, you know? And I think sometimes people just don't understand that enough. And like, it's like, you know, we're doing it. So we're doing that so we could do this. Exactly. And uh, the thing that you're doing here is you're telling stories, right? Imagine if you were here and you were talking to the previous owner of the pizza mill. Yeah. Right. That would show up on Google and we would now understand what that was like. I have no idea. Was it round? Was it square? Who made it? I don't know either. How cool would that have been to have the face right here describing it for us? And maybe they would have even brought in a tray for us. Yeah. But uh, I think um, you're going to find much more meaning e beyond even what you can comprehend years down the road. And you're going to look back and say, oh, my God, I did, I don't know, a thousand episodes or whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, wow, what, you know, what a great bunch of guests there. And uh, there's going to be somebody that goes on to something really big and you're like, hmm. You know? Yeah. So yeah. pretty cool. It's a, it's a cool thing. It is a cool thing, you know? It's like, and you never know where the journey takes you or where it's going to, where it's going to take you and the people that you meet. And I'm sure obviously you probably experienced the same, like you probably met, you know, you know, probably thousands of people and then that have taken you in a direction that you've never gone or, you know, or never realized you would, you know, end up going down this other path over here and then meeting that person, that person, you become friends, whatever. Like, it's like the journey is incredible. Yeah. And it's just, just by like, building those relationships and like you said whether it's five followers or five thousand or twenty five thousand whatever it doesn't really matter i just want like people i just want good people that care like if you don't care about my shit like i don't care whatever like you know what i mean i think i used to get a little bit like mad like when people didn't support me um and i'll, I'll still like you know rants every now and again like when you know some people that i feel like should support me don't support me but you know i now have also have the mindset like you know uh you can't ex just don't don't expect it from the start like and and you know this is a good tip i think for any other content creators is um don't expect your family and your friends to be your supporters because they're not going to be and that's just the truth and when i again when i started this not that i was i was expecting that per se um but you would just think that more family and friends would support you and, and again it's not that i don't have any of the support of them you know what i mean but there's just some that i would have thought like oh man like be cool once in a while if you did not that i need the pat in the back because i'm not that guy right but um but as a content creator when you're starting out you, you can't get caught up in that and not that i did get caught up in it by any means because i just put the content out regardless i don't care if one person claps or a million it doesn't it doesn't matter to me because again that's not why i'm doing it right but don't get caught up in that because that is just a road to zero like you'll you'll just get caught up in that and then guess what you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna quit you're gonna quit because 
you, because the people that you thought were going to support you don't support you. But the cool part is, is that the people that do support you always ends up being the most surprising to you. And, you know, we make connections like this. And I know there's going to be a lot of mutual support. Not that there wasn't before, but, you know, even just me and you going forward. And like anyone else that there's people that you're going to meet now just because of the show. And there's people that I'm going to meet because of your content and vice versa. And we're all just going to help each other. And that's the point. And those are the people that matter. Not that your family and friends don't matter, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, but those are the people that matter because they're the ones really contributing to what you're doing. And you're contributing to their thing. You're, they're contributing to your thing. And it just makes it better, you know? So just, you, you can't, I guess, like, long story short is, again, don't expect people to support you. Um, or at least not your family and friends because they're always going to be the ones that are going to be the least, at least, in, you know, my experience and from what I've learned from other content creators, like, it's always the closest family and friends that don't. You know, of course, they say, hey, how's, your, how's the thing? How's the podcast? Whatever. It's like, oh, good, 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 you know? And then it's like, you know, then it's like kind of like they don't want to talk about it anymore. This is fine. You know, I could talk about it all day, right? You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure same thing with you. You could probably talk about your thing all day because you're so passionate about it. That's the point. You know, I'm getting all fired up here because like you get so passionate about these things, right? And if the person across the table from you or in the kitchen or whatever is not as passionate, then you're just like, oh, they don't care. And you get a little discouraged, right? So, yeah, I mean, look, I, I have a, you know, unhealthy relationship with pizza, right? Just uh, way too much fascinating. And, um, you know, it becomes the butt of a joke a lot of the times. And, yeah, I do spend a lot of time on this, um, you know, a lot of nights, a lot of weekends. But uh, well, it has opened up a lot of doors to, to meet. The, like, my superstars are not, you know, Tom Cruise and these types of people. Uh, my daughters would meet Taylor Swift, you know, and, like, I whatever. Like, I would pick meeting... Uh, like a, a better known pizza guy to, than Taylor Swift. And she's probably gasping if she listens to this. And <laughs> yeah. my son would like yeah. to meet Bluey or a Ninja Turtle. Right. But like, I want to meet real people doing real things. And I'm not saying Taylor Swift isn't real. Sure. But like, I like the people that are grinding it out, doing it. And again, doing four hour shows is a, that's grinding, I would say. Yeah. Um, but I like, you know, people that I feel that I feel are authentic in front of me and really doing it and accessible too. Think people that generally, you know, the world wouldn't say, "Oh, that's a superstar," you know. But I, that, those things, I like to elevate people like that. Sure. Right? Um, I did. I, I have to say, uh, we talk about support. Uh, uh, if if it wasn't for my wife being so patient with me on this whole journey, she's been here the whole time. Um, I, I definitely would not be able to do this. You know, whether it's oh, you know, I'll I'll take the the little guy while you're, you know. Um, off doing another interview or, you know, I know you got to go eat pizza or, and this and that, or, but, but she's been wonderful and my family's been very, you know, supportive. And um, I think my mom was like my first fan. She like recruits same. people for yeah, me. Same, yep. Um, so that was a big deal. You know, she still like recruits people. Yeah, my mom's I, always wearing the shirt out at the grocery store, you know. It's great. <laughs> yeah. So you get like, you do get support, but I, I, think, um, I think I understand what you're saying. Like when I'm at a party with friends, it's like, I appreciate that we talk about pizza because, like, that's people perceive that's what I want to talk about. Um, but I feel like uh, it's like I don't want to monopolize this conversation again on on pizza. Like, let's, what did you do this week? Or I haven't seen you in six months. Why are we talking about pizza? Or, you know. So, um, but I, I kind of get where you're going with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, I, I agree. Yeah, it's like um, you know. But like I said, it's 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 just having meeting the community of people. Like that's what this this also is too. Like for me, like the mission is just building like a community of people. And it's like, hey, if my some of my closest friends and or family aren't interested in like this type of content community, then fine, no big deal. I'm not gonna be like mad about it. Like you know, whatever, Maybe not their thing. But just find the people that are your thing. You know, and those people will come to you. Like those people, like when you just put the content out there. People just relate to it. You know, like you said, like it's just, it's the expression in the food and in the pizza and people are going to relate to your self-expression and be attracted to your content. That's totally it. agree. And there, there's so many people like, so a geek out here probably don't know who this person is, but um, I was at a, a pizza expo in Atlantic City and my, my pizza like hero is a guy named Tony Gemignani, right? He has a bunch of uh, spots actually. Tony over. Gemignani. Yeah, 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 Gemignani, great guy. <laughs> but he's like uh, the head of the... Uh, the uh, world pizza champions pizza team and like just more accomplished than anyone you know um but uh i got to meet him at uh at this expo and it was just cool you know you know i, I bought a third copy of his book you know whatever because i just you know wanted to have a signed one um but uh so, but then 
I'm watching his demo on Detroit style pizza and he's, he's walking with the pizza. He's walking with the pizza. And then he points and he goes, Nepa pizza review. And he gives me a full like 45 second plug to the whole audience. And after it was toward the end of the, the demonstration. And then I had this crowd of people around me that wanted to just come just because this legend said so. Right. And I was like, wow, this was like, I didn't even know how to process it. I was surprised I didn't faint and on the floor. But, um, you know, a lot of people wouldn't, he wouldn't be their superstar, right? But, like, that was that was something that never would have happened if I didn't sit down 12 years ago um, or 11 years ago and start doing this, you know? None yeah. of, none, I wouldn't be sitting here with you if I right. didn't sit down. But you gravitate toward folks like that and build, like, a community. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, it is really cool. And, and, and I, you know, I almost failed to mention shout out to my wife as well um, when you were giving your wife the shout too. I mean, I've, and again, I've said this like so many times too on the show and just even to other people, everybody's like, everybody always asks me like, how do you, how do you do it all? How do you always do what you do? And usually one of the first things I say is if it wasn't for my wife, I wouldn't be able to do what I do because, and I'm, I feel like I'm literally mimicking exactly what you said. If it wasn't for her patience, cause she's got like the best greatest patients in the world if it wasn't for her and her patients like i wouldn't be doing this like i wouldn't be able to do this because she like holds it all to, holds it all together holds me together right like she like grounds me in that sense um but again same thing like you know she's 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 the one at home with you know with brayden and you know i'm able to do these things when i need to and want to do these things and if it wasn't for her support i mean you know so shout out to the supportive spouses anyone out there who's got the supportive spouses it's important. It really is. If you don't have it, you're not going to be able to do something like you or I are doing because you need that. Like you really, really, truly need that. And it's it's a it's a big team effort, man. Like it it's really a big is. team effort. And when you look at the the bigger, I follow a lot of like dad accounts, dude, dad, and those those types of people. But when you look at those creators, they all bring their spouse in, right? So they're a part of it. Now they're probably making so much money they don't, you know, yeah. they're just yeah. they're both in the business, yeah, right? right? But um. They're a uh, character. But it, yeah, yeah, it sort of comes down yeah. to that. And it's just this natural progression there. So hopefully one day we get there. But uh, um, but you, like you said, big shout out to, to the support system there because that without them, we we wouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Oh, and you know, I, I can't believe like after, you know, we've been recording for some time now and I can't believe it took this long to get to this point. But you're uh, the, the cover of the magazine. Oh, like we're I feel like we're nearing the end here. And like I'm like. I'm like, oh man, like Jim's on this, Jim's, I got this cover of this magazine and we, we, we didn't even, we didn't even get to talk about it. So that is, um, I'm going to go, I don't, I don't like to use the term the best or this or that, but, um, th this is probably the biggest achievement and the biggest validation I can find, um, to be on the cover of PMQ pizza magazine, which is like a national publication that is mailed to every pizzeria in the country that signs up for it. Right. So, um, they also have a, a big social and uh, online presence. So, um, when the, when the editor reached out and said, Hey, we're, we're considering you for the cover as the first ever pizza influencer that's ever been on the cover. I was like blown away. I, I, I didn't know what to say, you know, a little emotional about it, whatever. And um, I was like, wow, I, d I didn't know how to process it because I'm in here just creating, doing something I love. And then to get, I don't do anything for accolades or recognition, but this was, um, you know, a, really a crown jewel to be able to don the cover. It's usually owners. Uh, one of my one of my friends who I met through this, uh, Freddie the Pizza Man, who's in Detroit, Michigan, or just outside of Detroit. Um, he has a foundation for autism, doing great things. He was on the cover, and I I got a copy. And you know, one day I'm gonna go up to him and have him sign it. But I thought, oh, I'm gonna be there with Freddie. What you know? So. Really cool. I couldn't be more proud of yeah, that. Yeah, congratulations. Like, yeah, it's uh, getting get a little emotional about yeah. it here. Sorry. No, man, I get it. It's it's and, and I I I, uh, I understand. I can one hundred percent relate to you on that because again, I'm um you know I'm like the type of person where same thing. Like as a content creator of me doing what I do, um, it's hard as the person who's doing this to be able to remove yourself and see what you've done and see what you've built and really say like. Yeah, wow! I built that this this thing that became a big thing, and I know like you're. I could tell like you're a humble guy too, right? You probably don't want to feel like you're bragging, and I feel like a lot of times me too. Like I, I whenever I talk about like the success of this or like achievements I've got or you know like the just the following, etc. 
a lot of times I feel just guilty when I'm talking about it because I just feel like people think I'm bragging. And so then, so I tend not to do it because I don't want people to feel like I'm bragging, but I'm really not because like I very, very rarely like give myself the credit, you know what I mean? And, and I could feel like the same thing with you. And it's like, it's a, it's a, such a cool feeling when somebody like that, you know, the, the uh, PMQ pizza reaches out and says, hey, we're putting you on the cover. And you're like, man, yeah. This is cool now. Like the, the fact that somebody's like recognizing you, right? Like again, not that you're doing it like for the recognition, but like when 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 once you start getting recognized by, you know, places like this, like, you know, in your case it's this this pizza magazine that it, it means a lot, right? For the industry, it's a big thing. Like like that's so cool and like you should celebrate it and and like, you know, like I'm 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 happy for you, man. Like cuz again, like I get it when you're when you're doing the thing, right? You're you're running the, the ship here. You you don't really you're not able to really take a step back and, and see like what you've done, what you've accomplished. And you may not think it's a big deal. Right. But like what you do is, is, is a lot, man. And it's like, it, it is a big deal. Like, and I know you don't think that of yourself. And I, all, a lot of times I feel like the same about me. Right. And everybody's always like, Bill, like what you do is so great. And I'm like, yeah, what's so great about it? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just doing it. I'm like, I, I don't know what I'm, I'm just doing it. Like, and they're like, yeah, but it's so, it's so cool. I'm like, oh, cool. Thanks. You know, like, you know, so it is, it's, I, I get it. Like when you, when you have one of those moments, it's like, it's a cool thing because it's, you know, like you said, it's, you, you don't, you, you're not expecting or you're not, you're not looking for that. And then when you get it, it's just a, it's a really cool feeling. So congrats, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, especially when it comes out of nowhere like that. Um, so just, I want to give a shout out to Rick Heinem, uh, the editor of PMQ, uh, for giving me a shot at this and, uh, it's just really, really grateful. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not very good at celebrating wins for myself. But that's you know, I might might have to take a little victory lap on that one because it just I'm just so excited about it. Um, but it's, that's really not what it's about, though, right? And I, this is never only a couple times it's felt like work to me, and it was because I was doing things that other people thought I should be doing, right? Um, one of the you know I get asked about this a lot, but probably the first time I'm getting out there. Um, NEPA Pizza Madness was a tournament I created and I ran it for seven years. And um, it was the, the purpose was to shine the light on 64 pizzerias. And it was like a voting popularity yeah. bracket yeah. style. It didn't really prove who had the best pizza. Um, it was just, you know, who had the best following who can, you know, drive yeah. into the championship. Make the cut. Now, That's a bad dad joke. <laughs> There's no such thing as a bad one. It's, it's right, right. They're all bad, uh, yeah. yeah, or good. <laughs> I'm not sure. Not sure. All bad or all good. Oh all God. the same. Um, so totally derailed your story. No, it's there. good. But um, so what I was thinking um, is like, it was really cool. Like you know, the, the Citizens Voice and the Scranton Times and WNEP were were covering it, and it got a lot of press, and it got hundreds of thousands of votes every year, and um, it was widely popular. But like. It was just terrible working the back end of it, uh, hearing the you know uh, the, com the complaints. This isn't working. This I'm, I'm not a real tech guy, right? So I told you I use like Blogger. I just upgraded to WordPress, which was like a massive overhaul for me. So like I don't know what's going on. I you know I, I take on a little sponsor so I can uh, you know a afford a, a little software package, and I rely on the software. And I have people questioning the code of the software. It's like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> right? So I'm up all night and just stressed out to the max. And uh, I loved what it did, right? Because it put some smaller shops out there, right? And uh, I also came to meet the owners through the, you know, awarding of the thing, which, uh, you know, spawned some sort of lifelong friendships. So I'll never take it back. Um, I, I, I don't regret doing it, but I think I, I, I held on a little too long, a lot of late nights, a lot of stress, a lot of just didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed the interaction and people supporting, but I, I just didn't enjoy the exercise. And I said, that's not how I want to support places. I want to do it one by one, telling their story, and this is what I enjoy. So now it's gone, and, uh, you know, if, if it ever comes back, it'll be somebody else running it for me. Uh, I just got to get a budget to do that, right? So yeah. I want to be hands off, and uh, that's good, I, I want to be running uh, things yeah. like that. Though. It's important to stay true to yourself. But you know, you, like you, you get a lot of suggestions. Oh, but you should really. <laughs> I get, I get a lot, which is a good, it's a good problem. It's a good problem, right? Yeah. But sometimes you chase these things, mm -hmm. and um, they're successful. The metrics say they're successful, but your heart says otherwise, otherwise. right? Yeah. And when you're, 
I was literally losing sleep over this for a period of like three to four weeks. And uh, it was just not a healthy thing for me to be doing. And uh, who would have thought a simple pizza voting contest would have caused so much yeah. stress. And I'm not like an anxious person, but I was constantly <laughs> anxiety stricken yeah, with this. Wow. But, uh, you know, that's sort of a uh, first time I've talked about that publicly. We, it sort of, you know, went away quietly. Yeah. But that's, yeah. Uh, that's really what you know what it was about it was it was it was too much too much stress and uh really didn't you know really didn't wasn't something i loved to do yeah well that's good man it's good that you realized it and you know and just moved on because that's important you know like it, it really is it's so important yeah we again we talked about authenticity so much today uh but yeah just staying true to yourself man and just doing doing what you want to do and how you want to do it and even if it means maybe not maybe not making as much money because i think that's the other important thing too you know um does money help yeah hundred percent mm-hmm. helps with everything not only with this business and your business but life and other stuff you have kids i have kids you know what i mean like it, it helps right obviously but yeah i think staying true is uh is is very important and people could see that you know people could and i always i said we said this earlier when we talked about it too but people can see right through that so um yeah just stay true to yourself for anyone listening that's you know you know maybe trying to just do something just to make that quick buck because you know, I'm big on, I'm not looking to make a quick buck with anything and I'm not really, I don't want to put my name and reputation out on the line and attach myself to something that, you know, maybe just cause I'm making a quick buck. Like that's not, it's not me. It's not my style. I've never done that. I, you know, I, I, you know, like I don't, I don't want to do that. I never want to do that. You know, um, even though sometimes some people may think like, Oh, oh he's just doing that or he's just sponsored by them because it's like, no, like I truly do like every sponsor that I have, I, I'm a customer, uh, all, uh, almost every single one of them, maybe with the exception of like one or two, like I, you know, Anne's loan law, for example, like in personal injury attorney, I've never had an injury, so I'm not a client. Right. But like if I got injured or I had know somebody that got injured, guess who I'm referring them to them. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I like them. I believe in them. They're great people, great family. They know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, it's like, but otherwise like everything else, like I literally, I'm the customer of all the sponsors, which, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just big, it's a community. You're just going back to community, not only just the listeners, followers, whatever, sponsors and everything. And same thing with you. Obviously, I, I, I know the same holds true for you. Yeah, so. a quick example. Um, so we talked about pizza sauce before, and uh, I make my own, of course, but a lot of people ask me about the pre-made pizza sauce. And there's a lot of junk. You know how they have these aggregated lists that are probably made by bots, top 10 this and top whatever, probably nobody ever tried it right? but so what i did was i said you know what i am going to try them all right so i went to every grocery store that within like a 30 mile radius of my house i bought everything that was on walmart.com and amazon.com that was available and reasonably affordable like there was some like a little jar of sauce for 40 bucks i you know i didn't do that but yeah. i don't think people my readers were interested in a 40 dollar jar of sauce that you know um So I tried them all, I rated them all, and I developed my own list. And that happens to be my highest clicked article, also my most profitable article, because when people say, when people read at the top, Bianco DiNapoli is your top pizza sauce, and they can click right on it to, you know, support me that way, and they're going to try it anyway, so you might as well click through. Um, that's, That's as authentic as I can give you content. I went, I bought them, I tried them, and here we go, right? So I just bought like a dozen more sauces. I'm going to add to it. Hopefully somebody takes out the top spot. I'm not sure it's pretty good sauce. But um, but yeah, get be a customer before you sort of, you know, take, right. the, you know, take the bait. But like if, if some company, I, you get approached all the time. You probably get the emails oh, nightly. Yeah. And, I get uh, stuff, and I'll take the free product to try it for yeah. sure. Like, I mean, and I just said this, I think on a recent episode too, like, I mean, like I get stuff sent to me all the time. And like, if it's something I really like, aren't even interested in trying, like, I'll say no. But like most times, you know, majority of things like I would be interested, like, you know, that's a product, right? And I have a couple things right now and I won't mention any names, but like I got the product and I just don't really like it. I don't really care for it. So thanks for the free product, but no, we're not doing anything together. Like, and that's, I mean, honestly, like that, I have, I have two things like that at home right now that I'm just like, okay, it was all right, but I don't think it's anything I could really get behind. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. And I'm, I get the offers uh, for different products, whatever, most kitchen stuff now because you know air fryers and things like that and i i have i just copy and paste this caveat like i am not 
guaranteeing you anything of this. Yeah, like you yeah. come pick this item yeah, up. At your own risk. Yeah, like if I like it, I will produce a video. But I, I'm not going to put my reputation out there and tell people this is a wonderful product or something like that. Um, I just got offered something that was interesting. I'm not a coffee drinker at all, right? So this uh, this mushroom coffee company. Uh, ah, I, yeah, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. They reached out and they were saying, look, we, we're not asking you for anything. We don't. You know, whatever. And I was just honest. I was like, look, I don't even know if I have a coffee maker in the house to make the coffee. So they explained whatever. But, you know, they were passionate about their product. And I was like, you know, this is actually kind of interesting, right? So so I said, I ah, will give it a whirl. And I, I said, look, if I like it, you know, I'll, I'll share my opinion. If I don't, if I don't like it, well, I, I'm not really qualified to talk yeah. about coffee in the first place, let alone <laughs> mushroom coffee. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah. maybe it's something cool that I haven't experienced before. Yeah, yeah. I'm you know? trying something new. Yeah. So, so you liked it? I it's I guess it's uh, in the mail. So the, oh, just oh, an oh, it's coming. It's yeah, coming. This is just an experience okay. I had like, well, over the weekend. Okay. Well, I'm curious to hear your experience because believe it or not, I have not a coffee. But hold on. Speaking of mushrooms, look at this. What do we got? Alice chocolate. Alice mushroom chocolates. This one's for deep sleep. No kidding. Yeah. And the other one, um, the other one over there is, uh, I might as well just grab it. They're empty, by the way. Sorry, I ate them all. Oh, missing out. Yeah. And disclaimer, you know, these aren't like psychedelic mushrooms. Mom, don't be worried. I'm not <laughs> like, I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, yeah. So they're, they're legal people. Um, but yeah, so uh, focus and energy and for deep sleep. Honestly, I'm not even joking. And I, and I, you know. I actually haven't even gotten back to them. To, I, I I feel bad. I to I haven't told them how much I really did like it. Which but which this is making up for it right now. <laughs> this is like a free commercial for them. But uh, deep sleep, uh, like I really enjoyed. Not that I didn't like this one because I did. But the uh, honestly, the the deep sleep is it was incredible. Like you, you just eat one. Y'all did just just you dose one square. You know, and I'm not going to read the names because I, I can't pronounce some of the names. So just if you want to read what the ingredients are, just go to the, just just go to their website. I'm not sure what it is. This is a horrible commercial, but just Google Alice mushroom chocolate and you'll find it. But, but yeah, honestly, like it was great. It was great. And, and because I liked it, I brought it in here, right? Like I have it, maybe I'll do something more with them. You know, I still have some more at home. Like I do actually still have some left, but they sent me like a nice package, you know, with a whole bunch of samples and, you know, to last a little while actually. And it's not cheap. I forget what it costs, but mm -hmm. you know, it's not cheap, but it was good. And like, I actually liked it. So. I think people don't realize how that whole thing works, right? They, they think, oh, you get all this free food or free this or free that. Now, where I don't take a free pizza, um, I definitely like product links are, that's how I, you know, I, I don't sell a lot of t-shirts or anything. So product links are how I do it. But I only lend my opinion to things that I like, right? right. And so like, otherwise they're going to have a, I just, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I get this, let, let's say it's a, let's say this is, I get a toaster or whatever, I, I, I don't even use a toaster anymore, but let's say I get one and it's horrific and or, or it takes, you know, seven minutes to make a lightly brown toast. What value do I give the reader to get on there or the viewer to say, this thing's awful, it doesn't really work. <laughs> right. Like what What value does yeah, that None. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. um, so I, I'm not yeah. quite sure, but <laughs> I don't think people understand how the whole influencer thing works. Uh, so I, I think that was a cool, transparent example. Yeah, for real. How, Honestly, like I haven't even talked about them anywhere. Like yeah. I put them over there. They're kind of just been in the background that like nobody could probably see. And I just, I guess, I guess not that I was like waiting to for an opportunity to like sort of talk about it, but kind of because I wanted it to be authentic and real. This is honestly is the first time I've ever actually even spoken to anyone publicly on any of my platforms. I tagged them when they first like like I went you know I d we DM them back and forth, and when they say hey we're gonna send it to you like I you know screenshotted the the thing saying hey I got this you know shout out to Alice Mushrooms for sending me the product can't wait to try it, that was it I've been kind of silent since then because I've been just testing mm -hmm. it out and trying it, um, and I haven't spoken about it yet but yes yeah, so this is the first this is the first time but that's so. the other thing right you don't just like get it and then speak about it you you actually try it. like there's a lot involved oh, it's been, this here. has been weeks dude yeah weeks right so like i get somebody shipped me an air fryer and it's like oh, i really love this thing so yeah. I, i've just posted the video and uh, it also is a grill inside i'm like geeking out over it but like i had a great first cook with it right 
And I was like, oh, does that mean you're going to go post a video? No, you got to try the other features. Yeah. Like, is it going to hold up, beat it up a little bit? Yeah, I got to make sure it really, really yeah. holds up. And then after that process, then you render your opinion. But like some people are like, oh, here's my first sip of the energy drink. Greatest yeah. thing I've ever had. Yeah. That's not authentic. Yeah. Right? yeah. How do you render an opinion if you haven't really tried it? Exactly. Right? So. But yeah. So anyway, yeah. So, but if I'm curious, I'm curious on your thoughts on that mushroom um, coffee. And then if, uh. If you do like that, I don't. I mean, I would imagine I don't know. I, I I think I know what brand you're talking about. I see their ads actually, just because I'm just because I've been clicking on stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm curious your thoughts on it. And uh, they probably don't have like a sleep one, or maybe they do. But I wouldn't think unless it doesn't unless it doesn't have caffeine. They they said they had uh, the the benefits that you're showing here on the container were really similar to what yeah. they were talking mm-hmm. about. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like natural way to yep. do this. Yeah. And I was like, cleared the psychedelic thing out <laughs> yeah. of the way. Yeah. Right. Um, Cause but, people get uh, nervous. Like, Oh, what is this? <laughs> yeah. I, so, I was like, like I said, I, I don't like coffee and mushrooms are, I take them or leave them. But like, it was intriguing. And this person had a lot of passion and, and they were authentic in how they presented it. Like, look, or we really don't have any, you know, we don't expect anything from you. But the fact that they would just give it a shot to a known non-coffee lover, why not? You know, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I bet you didn't think I was going to come in here talking about mushrooms. <laughs> Dude, I can't even believe it. I, I, I mean, I hope everybody at least made it to this point of the show, you know. But but yeah, like you said, like even people that are probably still watching and listening are probably thinking to themselves like, I was not expecting Jim and Bill to, to be talking about mushrooms. Right, like it's crazy. Well, I'll, you know, but maybe though, because mushrooms on pizza, but like those kinds of mushrooms, not these not kind, not, not this kind. You know, but, but if, interesting. If you're here live, it did it did look a little bit like a, a gimmicky magic trick. You know, oh, I, but but literally, <laughs> right? I, I you know, I I didn't expect to talk about mushrooms, and I don't think right. you did either. Right, so. exactly. Yeah, like uh, I I didn't tip you off beforehand about this. <laughs> I forgot it was even over there until until you brought it up. As soon as you said mushrooms, I'm like, oh man, I have the, I have these little containers. I I, I have these over there and. Boom, here we are. So if I, if I like it, I'll let you know. And if I don't like it, you can have the rest of the package to try. Here we go. How's that? Deal? All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Pass, pass, it, pass it on to me. <laughs> <laughs> re-gift it. That's Re-gi- all. Re- re-gifting at its finest. Hey, Slightly used. So, somebody will like it somewhere. I think so. You know? I think so. Something for everybody. Mm-hmm. So, man, this is great. This was awesome, dude. Having a blast. Seriously. So uh, how can... I know it's, I think it's pretty obvious how to find you online, but for people that... Maybe some of my listeners that don't know who you are, which is probably few and far between, how can how can they find you online, social media, website? Where do they need to go? So a lot of people think I just exist on maybe Facebook or Instagram, but like the hub of everything I do is nepapeacereview.com. So I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, if you can believe that. Um, and also Twitter, now known as what? X. X, and then yeah. uh, my YouTube channels kind of, I'm trying to invest a little bit more in the YouTube now. So nice. All right. Cool. And I appreciate it. I had a great time with you. Yeah, dude, this is great. And, uh, you know, I don't know why we didn't get pizza today, but you know, we have, we have to do a, we have to do a pizza thing soon. Maybe like I said, when you get up, if you come up to a Mount top area and you uh, want to venture over to Adelina's, let me know. And, uh, maybe we can share a slice. Sounds great. And some mushrooms. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Mushroom. We could have these as like the not that it's like a dessert, really, obviously, yeah. but I mean it is chocolate, you know. Um, Sounds like we'll be sleeping though. By the yeah, time it's over. the thing is, it doesn't like make you uh, drowsy though. By the way, it's okay. not like you take it. It's like it's not like a thing where you take it. And it's like oh, I'm I'm sleeping. I'm drowsy. It's just like they do, they do recommend that you take it uh, like one hour before you think you're gonna go to sleep and go to bed. Um, but the nights that I've take that I've that I've eaten it, uh, like I've actually really gotten like a, a very good deep sleep, like very a deep cool. like a deep sleep, like. Probably some of the best deep sleep, honestly, I've ever gotten. I even, I even said to my wife, like, because honestly, I didn't, I, when I first, I was, I was very skeptical. Mm-hmm. I was skeptical. I was like, that's ah, not going to work, you know, but I got some pretty good deep sleep and I really, yeah. I mean, obviously it tastes good too, but you know. It's a great authentic testimonial right there. There it is. When will we be right there? So we'll catch up, uh, eating some pizza one of these days and maybe I'll send you some of my sauce and, uh, yeah. Sounds good. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Jim Mirabelli on the Snacks Podcast in the Blue Door Studio. Thanks for joining me. If you want to see more On The Stacks content, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash On The Stacks Podcast or search the hashtag On The Stacks on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. 